Hello, hello, folks. Welcome, welcome back to our In Inner Goddess Team series. This is Deborah Roth from Spirited Living, and I am delighted to share with you this week. I'm, I haven't done this very often, but I'm actually sharing a bunch of lovely uh, love goddesses. Uh, Valentine's Day in the States is next week. And I am uh, not going to be around next week. I won't be doing a live next week. So, hi, Barbara. So, I figured I'd just give you bonus goddesses this week. <laughs> um, so, I, I, if you're new to, to our Inner Goddess Team videos, then um, please do check back in. Uh, you can go to my YouTube channel and subscribe there and see all the ones I've been doing for the last two and a half years. And, and I always ask, um, and you'll have a chance to do that three times uh, with, with today's video, how is it that the energy of the archetype, the archetype of, of, of these goddesses today, these goddesses plural, how can you bring their energy into your life? It really is very much, and each one of them is is very much embodies the the energy of the divine feminine, the sacred feminine, of of love and intuition and compassion and cooperation and all those things that I'm so passionate about bringing back into our world uh, today and always. So, I invite you to um, to just be thinking of that. Uh, where in your life, and I'll ask some questions to kind of spark that conversation for you too. So the first one, and these are uh, these are all ones that I was a couple of them I was vaguely familiar with, but um, the first one I want to share with you is this is um, Azuli Freda Dahomey, and she is a Haitian Vodou uh, goddess, or um, she's called an, an Iwa in in that tradition. Um, she's a Radha aspect, and, and Radha are the, the Iwas, the spirits that are, are considered to be the most sweet-natured and, and dependable spirits, because then there's some very mischievous ones, too. And she is the goddess, uh, her full name again, Ur Urzuli Freda Dahomey. She is uh, the spirit, the Haitian-African spirit of love, beauty, jewelry, dancing, luxury, and flowers. Hey, Nicole. And she is sometimes I think the voodoo, the religion of voodoo, gets gets such a, a bad rap because of of some of the cultural stuff that's put out about it. All it really is is a, is amalgamation. It really came to be in the about the 16th through the, um, or maybe even earlier than that. Um, yeah, the 16th through the 19th centuries, when it melded um, the religions, the, the spiritual beliefs of enslaved people who were coming from Africa with um, the Roman Catholicism. And she actually, um, Urzuli Freda Dahomey, um, is actually, um, she's she kind of got syncret, syncretized, I think they call it, with uh, the Virgin Mary as a suffering mother, because as much as she's about delight, um, she is also, um, she has tears of, of suffering. Um, her colors, she wears three, her, her colors are uh, pink, blue, white, and gold. Uh, her symbol is a heart, how perfect is that? I'm actually wearing, I don't know if you can see my little heart, um, this wonderful piece of jewelry I just got this weekend, um, or last weekend. Um, that I'll, I'll give you the information about the wonderful artist um, who does jewelry and other beautiful art. Um, and she's, so her symbol is the heart and I've got my, my pinks and my reds and everything else on. She is, um, as much as she has this energy of d delight and sexual and um, sexuality and femininity, compassion embodied, she has this darker side too of being kind of jealous and, and spoiled. So she's a good one to call in if you want to um, engage in the game of flirtation. And she was protect, particularly notable, and I actually found her on a Facebook page, an LGBTQ Facebook page, of being indiscriminate with what sex she flirted with and who she ended up with. Um, so I think she's, a, she's galvanizing from that direction too. Um, 
She is said, Frida is said to have the wealth of the world at her fingertips. And, and yet there is never enough of pink champagne, of cakes, which typically, if you wanna make an offering to her, are white with white frosting. So I don't wanna, I, I could probably spend the whole time on her, but that is Freda Dahomey, uh, the Urzuli Freda Dahomey, our first goddess of love we're gonna highlight. The second one is, uh, where are all my pretty pictures? Um, this is Ostlich, and she is an Armenian goddess of love. And she she started out, um, let's see, she was she started out as a goddess who created heaven and earth. And then somewhere along the line, she got displaced and demoted to a maiden when another goddess, Anahit, took over. And she's personified by the starlight, by um, skylight. And later on, she still became the, a goddess of love, of maidenly beauty, that's where the maiden piece comes from, of water sources and springs. So you can see she's, she's, a, you know, she's surrounded by a spring and there's lots of skylight. That's part of her thing too, is, is the skylight piece. Typically her festival is in July. It's like mid-July, I think. Um, and, and it's connected, like so many of these pre-Christian Judeo uh, goddesses got conflated with, with Christian um, uh, celebrations. So this July um, festival of hers became the Christian holiday of the transfiguration of Jesus. Um, and on that day, people, they released doves and they sprinkled water on each other. That's her connection with springs, um, with wishes of health and good luck. Um, so that is, that's the Armenian goddess of love. And the last one I'm gonna highlight is Rati. And she I have heard of also. Um, and I, I don't know I can get her close enough. If you can see that she's apparently riding on a parrot, although it looks like a horse to me. But if you look closely, you can see that, she, that this, this being that she's riding on is actually made up of many other goddesses, of, of personifications of her, which is kind of cool. So she's the Hindu goddess of love, of carnal desire, of passion and, and sexual pleasure. Most of these, while they have love, they also have sensuality and sexuality. And she's um, considered to be the female uh, consort, the, the chief partner of Rama, who was the god of love. And it's typically depicted um, just alongside with him, uh, with him in, um, in legends and in sculptures and temples and everything else. Um, apparently, and the only, it's funny, most of these I couldn't find myths about, um, or you know, the stories about them. She was one, I think she has probably more than, than one. Um, but she has, she's a maiden who has the power to enchant the god of love. And apparently when, when the deity, when the, deity um, the Hindu deity Shiva uh, burns her husband to ashes, Rati beseeches and, and, and pays penance and leads to the promise of, of Kama, her, her husband, her lover, being resurrected. But he's resurrected um, in, as a reborn as the son of Krishna. Um, and, and then she becomes his nursemaid and his lover and his mother and all kinds of things. A lot of that <laughs> cross-pollination of all these different roles that they play with each other in, in many of these myths. Um, yeah, and eventually um, Kama uh, Pradayuma, which is the name of this son slash partner, um, takes again Rati as his wife. And, and so, once again, we bring the, the, the sense of delight and enjoyment into this, this love conversation because Rati actually comes, the etymology, the origin of, of her name, comes from the Sanskrit word meaning to um, uh, enjoy or to take delight in. And it means, and it refers to the fact that anything, everything can be enjoyed. So taking all of that in, Think about where in your life, here's your, your little bit of question to ponder, journal about, where in your life do you want to find enjoyment, more enjoyment? Who, how do you want to deepen your own um, connection to, your, to a partner if you have one? How, what kind of partner do you want to attract? And then ultimately, how do you want to engage in your own practices of self-love? 
coming up on this Valentine's Day next week. So you have lots of people, lots of lots of deities to play with. My my little um, doo -doo -doo, all of them <laughs> to play with to to really take you to a deeper level with this Valentine's Day. Whether you're celebrating yourself, a partner, attracting one. And one of my favorite, and I've actually sang this a couple times here, I've sung this a couple times. One of my favorite chants songs is actually from um, a wonderful singer songwriter named uh, Libby Roderick. And, and some of you may know this. It's just, it's one that I've sung in my women's circles, I have one coming up on February 20th, by the way. Um, you can check my website for that. Um, either the virtual one or the live one. And I've sung this in women's circles, either when we're talking about self-love or when we're talking about how we can share uh, what, what we wish, what we want to share with someone that we love. I actually sang, that, sang this uh, uh, in hospice to my 21-year-old nephew a year and a half ago, um, right before he died. So it's a beautiful song of love, either for yourself or for someone else. How could anyone ever tell you that you're anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you that you're less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice that your love is like a miracle? How deeply you're connected to my soul. I'll sing it one more time, maybe up a, up a half step. <laughs> That's low even for me. How could anyone ever tell you that you're anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you that you're less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice that your love is like a miracle? How deeply you're connected to my soul. Mm, so take that in, my gift, my gift of love from me to you. Share it with someone that you love. Mm, the words will be in the description of my YouTube channel. And have a beautiful week. I will be with my mom, who I love, at almost 93 years old. That's where I'll be spending Valentine's Day with a delayed celebration with my husband later in the week. Namaste. Thanks so much for joining me. See you next time.